One of the biggest complaints people have with TypeScript is that it makes it slower to actually write your code. And this is especially apparent on smaller projects or when you're creating a new project because you have to spend a lot of time working on creating all of these different types and stuff to use. And you really can't take advantage of that when you're first working on a project or inside of a smaller project. But this is actually completely false. No matter what project I'm working on, if it's small, large, new, or old, if I'm writing in TypeScript, I am able to write and develop things way faster than I can in JavaScript. And in this video, I'm gonna go over all the different reasons why that is and why you should give TypeScript a try if you've been holding out because you think it'll slow you down. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I wanna show you why TypeScript actually makes you a faster programmer. Now, one thing you may notice about JavaScript is if we just write some code where we wanna get a document.query selector for a button, for example, you'll notice I'm able to actually get some really good autocomplete via VS code. And if I just say like button.addEventListener, you can see I get a bunch of different events. I'll say click here. I'll come in with my event and I can say console.log e. And look, it already autocompletes for me. And I was able to write that very quickly because I could take advantage of autocomplete. And now I have some really great code. This is actually because behind the scenes, VS Code is actually converting your code to TypeScript. And it's trying to guess what all of your different types are. It's saying, okay, I know what a document is. I know what query selector is. I know that this is some type of HTML button element because you said you're getting a button. So it's able to guess and infer a lot of stuff, which is really impressive on its own. But as soon as you start to get to more complex stuff, like let's say I create a function that's called handle click, this handle click button is going to take in my event and I call this up here. So this will say handle click just like that. Now, if I wanna do the exact same thing, so console.log e. Oh, where'd my autocomplete go? I don't know what this is. I know in my head that this handle click is supposed to be e.target, but when I'm down here and I try to do my autocomplete, you'll notice I don't get anything useful. It's just trying to guess and obviously all these are wrong and I have to type this out by hand. So as soon as you get even one step removed from what the TypeScript compiler is supposed to know based on the VS Code guesses that you give it, you're immediately left with essentially no autocomplete or very bare bones autocomplete. Essentially, any time that you create a function that does something, doesn't matter what it is, all the parameters that come into this function, obviously they have no idea what these are supposed to be. VS Code can't guess that, so you're never going to get any autocomplete on any of that. And that is the thing that slows me down the most when I'm writing plain JavaScript code is the fact that I don't get any autocomplete for probably at least 50 plus percent of the programming that I'm doing slows me down a ton. And it also opens me up to a lot of problems because you know, what if I accidentally put two T's in the end of target and now I have an error. The only reason this is actually showing up is because I have a spell checker installed. But if this word was actually a correct word, but it wasn't something that existed, like I just say target two, for example, this is a correctly spelled word, but obviously this doesn't exist on my event and is going to be a problem that I'm going to run into because it's a bug and all of those different things I don't have to worry about in TypeScript. So if instead what I do is I just take this code, I'm going to copy this, move over to a TypeScript file. I'm going to paste this down and I'm just going to write out the exact same stuff actually. So I'm going to say const button equals document dot query selector a button just like that. And I believe the reason I'm getting an error here is because of this script file. So let me just comment out everything inside of here. There we go, that'll get rid of all my errors. Now what I can do is I can say button.addEventListener, click. So far, everything is working great. Same thing here, I can say console.log e.target. And then you'll also notice immediately TypeScript has done something great for me. It's added this question mark period automatically for me because it knows that query selector can return either an element, whoops, an element, or it can return null. So as you can see here, we have an element or null. So it knows that this is possibly undefined or null. So it needs to put in that nullish coalescing check for me. But now let's say I want to do that handle click instead. So I can say handle click. I'm going to create that function. So we can say function handle click. I know this is going to take in an event. And in our case, we need to define a type for this button. Now you may not know what this type is. I know for a fact that this is a mouse event, but if you didn't know what type of event this was supposed to be, what you can do is you can just take your function that you had before and hover over the variable. And this will tell you right here, hey, this is a mouse event. So that's how you know that this is a mouse event. Let's go back here. I had to add this one little bit of extra code. That's all TypeScript required me to do. And now when I come in here to do my console log, I can say e dot. Now I'm getting all of that same autocomplete, but I'm getting it inside of any function I want, all because I added essentially one word inside of my file. So as you can see, the difference in code between this and this is 
pretty much negligible. It's just that one extra type that I had to define here, but it gave me autocomplete for this entire function. And most likely this function is going to be quite large. So the amount of time I save with the autocomplete from not only saving me from having to think about what the actual words are, but also saving me from typing those individual keys is going to be much more than it's going to cost me to write out this one extra word at the top of my function. And this doesn't even take into account the amazing thing about TypeScript and that it saves you from so many different bugs. Because now if I spell this incorrectly as target2, you can see immediately I'm getting an error saying, hey, target2 does not exist on this. So it saves me from any type of bugs or errors that I can have happen to me by just typing things wrong or incorrectly remembering how things work. TypeScript is going to say, you know what, this thing doesn't exist and it's going to fix that problem or tell me what that problem is. So already I've shown how TypeScript can be really useful even in something super small like this. It's already saved me time by just, you know, the little bit of extra code that I had to write. What happens when you start to move to more of a real world use case where you have a slightly bigger project? So here I have a rather medium to largish sized React based application that's written entirely in TypeScript. And if I go to one of my more complex components, because if I look at some of these really simple components, you'll notice there's almost nothing for types. So let's go to this avatar. You can see I have like one type declaration in the entire thing and that's it. It's super straightforward. Same thing here. It's like at the very top, I have a, you know, a type for my props and that's about it. So those are super straightforward. But if I go to one of my more complex components like this giant form here, you can see I have a couple types at the top for my form inputs and my props. I'm using those types in a couple different places. But you'll notice overall, most of this code is JavaScript. I'm kind of highlighting all the sections here where I'm using some types. So far, we're at about maybe six instances of TypeScript specific code. If I keep going, you notice none of this is using TypeScript at all. This is just JSX, super straightforward. So there we go. This entire somewhat complex application for this form right here has six instances of any TypeScript code at all. But those six instances give me all of that autocomplete, all of that bug related insurance for any typos that I make and things like that. If I need to refactor something, like I want to call this image two, immediately I'm going to get tons of errors and it's going to underline all the sections where there should be image two, which is super handy if I need to do any of that. And overall, this just makes working with my code much better. As you can see, there's very little actual TypeScript code in here. 90% of what I wrote is JavaScript, actually probably more like 95 to 99% is JavaScript. And then there's that 1% of TypeScript sprinkled over top of it. Now there are a few files inside this project where I have a lot of types being defined. So if we just look through here, here we go. We have some model types, for example. You can see I have a bunch of just different types being defined inside of here. This may look like a lot of actual TypeScript related code, but I mean, this is maybe like 15, 20 different types, and that's all for every single model in my entire application. So it's really not too bad. Now, if we jump back here to this example we had before with our TypeScript, one other thing that a lot of people complain about with TypeScript slowing them down is that they have to deal with things like null all the time. Because right now, this button could be an HTML button or it could be null. So that's what this null check right here is doing. But oftentimes just adding this question mark period is not going to be quite enough for you because you need to do something if it is null or you need to do something else in case it is null. But this is not actually something that you should think about as slowing you down and more so something that's preparing you and helping you fix future bugs. Because let's say I didn't have this syntax in here and I had it just like this. Right now TypeScript's giving me an error. But if I wrote JavaScript, this would be perfectly valid. And then let's say my query selector fails. It doesn't actually select this thing. So immediately, if I fail to select this thing, now I'm going to have a bunch of different bugs that occur and errors thrown on my page. Well, before if I did this, it wouldn't throw any errors at all because a button is undefined, can't be found. It's just going to skip all of this code and not run. Also, if you, for example, you know what? You're like, I'm 100% sure this query selector will work and I really hate having this question mark in here. What you can do is you can add an exclamation point to the end of anything in TypeScript. And essentially that's saying it cannot be null. If we check this button now, you can see that it has no null type. You're saying, I guarantee that this thing exists. So you can immediately get rid of a lot of those problems just by adding this exclamation point at the end. And that gets rid of a lot of those null problems you may run into that possibly slow you down. Also, another reason people get extra slowed down with TypeScript when they're first starting out is they try to go too strict with TypeScript, especially if you're first getting started or you're trying to convert a project from JavaScript to TypeScript. Go pretty loose to start just so you can get things slowly converted over and then start to get more and more strict as you get more and more TypeScript code into your project and more used to how TypeScript works. Hopefully this video has got you excited to start trying out TypeScript and seeing how it can speed up your development. But if you're worried you don't know enough about TypeScript, I highly recommend you check out this video right over here where I talk about how you actually don't need to know that much about TypeScript and I show you the three most important things you should learn.